Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be creating a doll of my original character, Feline Varger. I thought this Cheryl Myers doll would be a suitable base for her. I cover the hair with a cloth so I don't accidentally melt it with my hair dryer. After the head is nice and squishy, I pull it off. While the vinyl is still soft, I push the eyes out from the inside with a screwdriver. Takes a little bit of elbow grease. From here, I prep the doll as usual. I use a cotton pad and a 100% pure acetone to strip the paint off of the doll. It's kind of tough to get inside of the mouth and I use a needle to push the cotton pad into the crevices. Feline is an elf, so she needs some pointy ears. I take some broken rerouting needles and push them into the existing ears. Next, I need to cut them down a bit. I'll be using my goggles to protect my eyes from possible flying needles. And wire cutters to trim off the ends. The second piece did vanish when I cut it, but I found it later. I'll be using epoxy sculpt to make the ears. My epoxy is a few years old and it takes a bit of effort to get it out of the tub and mix now. I cut out a lot of the mixing, but just this small amount took several minutes to combine properly. I divide it in half so the ears might be even. Then slide the clay onto the needle and start sculpting. I'm keeping the doll's original yellow hair, so I'm doing my best to work around it. I use rubbing alcohol to smooth out the clay. This can make a mess, so make sure to wipe down any surfaces that you want to keep clean before the clay fully cures. Now to color match the new ears to the original skin tone. I thought this paint was pretty close straight out of the bottle, so I laid down a few coats. Acrylic looks a bit darker after it dries, but I'll still need to blend it in with soft pastels later. I spray the head with Mr. Super Clear UV Cut Flat while wearing my respirator and goggles. The weather was very humid when I sprayed and I didn't want to have the fumes in the house, so as soon as the head was coated, I put it in an airtight container full of rice. This way the head can dry in just about any weather. For this face, I'm starting with blushing. I want to blend in the ears and block in rough shapes like the eyebrows and lips. My kneaded eraser is missing, so I'm just cleaning up the shapes with a regular eraser that has a sharp edge. I've been wanting to make a doll of this character for about two years, and I changed the base I planned on using at least twice. Feline is my oldest OC. She was created as the main character of one of my first comics whenever I was 12, and has had many different iterations. She's also the mascot for this YouTube channel. She can be seen in my logo at the beginning of each of my videos. So I honestly think that I put too much pressure on myself with this custom. I second guessed everything I did in the design and had trouble enjoying the creation process. This natural look, which is blushing, is probably my favorite stage and I kind of wish I had stopped here. I'm also still learning how to paint rainbow high faces. I may do her again with another base in the future. At 
this point, I started adding in sharper details with watercolor pencils. I slipped against the eye mold a lot and had to use water to remove the mistakes. Now I'm doing some contouring with white on the forehead and the brows. I use a light red and draw in the tear ducts. The molded on eyelids of these dolls are also very small and that it's pretty contrary to the way I normally do face-ups. I'm not giving up with this doll line yet. I really like the stout bodies and inset eyes, and I think I just need more practice working with them. I blend in some purple at the outside edge of the eyebrows and the eyelids. Then transition to the yellow with a red pencil. Using the same red, I sharpen the corners of the lips. Just like removing the paint with acetone, I find drawing in the crease of the mouth difficult. Instead, I lift some paint from the pencil with a wet brush and paint the inside of the mouth. I coat along the inside of the top eyelids with a deep purple. Now I'm just sketching in her face tattoo with a light gray pencil. Once I'm happy with the shape, I fill it in with a light blue. While I'm at it, I also give her some blue wing eyeliner. Then I gradually work in a darker blue, giving the tattoo some shading. I finish up the tattoos by outlining them in a cobalt blue. I tried flicking some water on the face, then dabbing some color in the droplets, but I ended up just drawing in most of the freckles and skin texture. I soaked up the ones that were too dark with my cotton glove. I'm trying to be light and avoid making the eyelashes too heavy. I struggled a lot getting the shape I wanted, so I switched to acrylic paint instead. I do want her to have black wing eyeliner closer to the eye, and paint is the easiest way to achieve it. I think I forgot I wanted her eyelashes to be subtle and I just started flicking them out from the lid. I felt like I lost a lot of the yellow in the brows, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add a few highlights with paint now. It just figures that this gets covered up with her bangs later. With most of the face done, I'm just going in and adding some depth to the eye sockets and contouring the face.
I deepen the creases around the eyes with a reddish brown pencil. And with that, I'm done painting the face. I soften the head again with my hair dryer and put it back on the body. Now let's prepare the head for the eyes. I don't want to risk separating the ears from the head, so I'm going to cut open the eye wells from the inside instead of trying to push in new eyes through the front. To do this, I'll have to cut the scalp open. I'm sectioning off parts of the hair, splitting it by rows, then tying off the top section. I try to open the head with a craft knife, but my blade was really dull. So I put on a work glove in case I slipped from using so much force. And then the blade kept shifting out of place. After taking a minute to put in a new blade and making sure it was nice and tight, I finally was able to make a clean cut. I stopped before getting to the hair part and left the rest attached. Then I start cutting out the back of the eye wells. Harley's Dollhouse sent me a bunch of eye bases back when we did our delightful bunny collab and I finally got a chance to use them. I'm doing a base layer of brown gouache paint. Once that is partially dry, I start painting in some highlights with a light yellow. Then using a deep brown, I paint the pupils. I go around the edge of the iris, creating an outer ring. I go back and forth painting in highlights and shadows. When I'm satisfied, I sand the whites with a nail buffer. This scratches off any paint that went outside of the iris. I got some black half beads off of AliExpress to use for the pupils. I drop a bit of resin in the eyes, being careful not to disturb the paint. Then using my tweezers, I gently place the half bead in the resin. I cure this with my UV flashlight. I paint more layers of highlights, this time on the freshly cured resin. This way the color pops more. I also dot on a small catch light with white. I try to cure in layers while using my UV light, but even in layers, the resin can still be sticky. I found that putting the resin in direct sunlight for an hour will finish the job and it won't be sticky anymore. I do a final coat over the entire eye, making it shine. And then cure one last time before putting the eyes outside to finish hardening. This is how they look finished. I secure the eyes and the head temporarily with blue tack. Her original hair was beautiful, but it didn't quite suit my character. Pauline's hair is straight, shorter, and has bangs. I made a few attempts to straighten the hair with just my hair straightener, but it wasn't very effective. I tried again, first spritzing the hair with some water. This worked much better, and I was able to separate out the front part of the hair to become bangs. I also sectioned off some side bangs in front of her ears. 
The hair still had some waves, so I switched to the boil wash method instead. This is the best way I know of fixing a new part line in the hair. I want the bangs to retain their shape, but it's difficult to get tools like a hair straightener that close to the head. You could also melt the face with it, so boiling water is the safest bet. After the hair is no longer hot to the touch, I start combing through the ends. Once it's dry, the bangs hold their shape nicely and I can start styling the rest of the hair. I'm going slow here so I don't accidentally make it too short. Now I'm cutting upwards from the bottom of the hair to feather the ends and make it less blunt looking. I give the back the same treatment. I'm aiming for waist length hair. There's enough of the trimmings to make a nice wig for another doll, so I'll be saving it. I style her side bangs. Off camera, I used heat to part her bangs, but they didn't hold in the end. It looked good for a few minutes. I was contemplating leaving the head flap open so I could mess with the eyes later, but I decided to make everything permanent. After reinforcing the sticky tack with hot glue, I super glue the head shut. The final step for the face is to add 3D lashes. I'll be using Elmer's glue all and some very fluffy lashes this time. These lashes are tapered at either end, so I can just cut one lash in half and have what I need. I add a bit of glue to the top and attach it to the inside of the upper eyelid with some tweezers. Since this is one piece, I'm trying to manipulate the lash into the curve as the glue firms up a bit. While the eyelashes dry, I'm going to make her some clothes. I'm using the Petite Curvy Basics pattern from RequiemArt.com this time. Feline's wardrobe is mostly comfy casual, depending on the story she's in. As a starter, I'll be making some pajama pants and a simple t-shirt. I trace out the pants pattern pieces, but widen the leg, especially at the bottom. This way they'll fit more like sleep pants instead of jeggings. I cut two front and two back pieces, as well as a waistband. The shirt is pretty simple. I'm using a variant of the shirt that is already attached at the shoulder. This is cut on the fold. Then I cut two sleeve pieces. Here you can kind of see how the pieces will be sewn together. I've had a few people ask me to show the sewing process. I don't have the best camera set up and I usually sew at my kitchen table. So I apologize if the camera work isn't the best here. I tried to show what I could. The first thing I do is sew the pockets and do some top stitching. Then I sew straight up the outside leg seam. The front of the pant leg is on the left and the back is on the right. Next I sew the two pant legs together at the front crotch seam. You could hem the top here and continue closing the pants, but I'll be sewing in a waistband so I pin that in place now.
I sew the waistband in right side to right side. This gets flipped over and sewn down like a cuff. The last step before sewing the inner leg seam is hemming the bottom of the pant leg. Finally, I sew the inner leg seam from one ankle to the other with right sides in. I turn the pants right side out and test the fit for a snap closure. And of course, I hand stitch the snaps in. If there's another way of doing this, please let me know. I like the way the clothes fit with snap closures, but sewing them is so awkward for me. I'm going to skip showing how to sew the shirt because it's very simple and this video is getting long enough as it is. I decided to make her a dress with modified sleeves. I took a regular long sleeve from another rainbow high pattern and flared it out quite a bit at the bottom. The bottom will be gathered and attached to a cuff that I made with the same width as the base sleeve. I'll also be using a bodice pattern from the Petite Curvy Level Up pattern set. Here are the pieces that I'll be using to make the dress, but I hadn't yet cut out the sleeve holes from the bodice, so it looks a little weird. For the skirt, I just cut one long rectangle, so it was about ankle length. Here's the finished dress. I'm not going to show the footage of me making this outfit. It was a nightmare. Somehow, when I hemmed the skirt, my machine decided to pull half of the skirt inside and it ripped out a small chunk of fabric. I hid this by sewing on the ribbon trim, but it was so much work getting the dress out of the gears. I thought I wrecked my machine. So after many struggles and disasters, my kind of mini me is done. Although she's more of a mascot at this point. Feline has been my self insert character in various comics I've drawn and is the name I've used online for years for games and art profiles. She's become a part of my online persona and has been with me for two decades. So it's somewhat understandable that I might put pressure on a doll to perfectly capture my character. In the end, I think this custom falls short of that. I'm not happy with a few things and may redo her with another doll base in the future. But if this was just a doll I was doing for fun with no pressure, then I'd be very happy with her. She's soft and friendly looking. got a lot of other customs lined up, so I won't be redoing this one anytime soon. I'm hoping I'll be able to just accept her more in time. Also, this blue dress from Hell doesn't quite suit her. I think I'll make another Rainbow High doll who can wear it. What do you think of her? Do you have any original characters who have stuck with you over the years? I'd love to read about them if so. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.